Welcome back to Branchy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. On Monday, rescuers were searching for six people missing after a luxury yacht was hit by a tornado off the coast of Sicily, killing one of the 22 people on board. The tornado hit the vessel around 5 a.m. Monday morning, according to a spokesperson for Italy's Coast Guard. The yacht was anchored about a half a mile from the port of Porticello on the Mediterranean island. Four Britons and two Americans are among those missing. Fifteen people have been rescued from the scene and one child was airlifted to the Children's Hospital in Palermo. According to the mayor's office, eight people have been hospitalized so far. A water spout, one of several types of tornadoes, developed over the area Monday morning, according to a report from the European Severe Weather Database. According to the Coast Guard spokesperson, the weather forecast had warned of potential strong winds with storms across the entire southern region of Italy Sunday. A 7.0 magnitude earthquake in Russia caused a volcanic eruption off Russia's east coast. According to state-run media, the volcano spurted a column of ash miles into the air when erupting. The Shivalik volcano is located in a coastal city with a population of about 180,000 people that lies in Russia's eastern region of Kamchatka. A local news agency, TASS, reported that the ash column rose as high as five miles above sea level, based on visual evaluate evaluations. There were no reports of injuries and no major damage was caused by the quake. However, some buildings in the area are being examined for potential damage with special attention paid to social facilities. While the Russian Emergency Ministry didn't issue any tsunami warnings, the U.S. Tsunami Warning System did issue a warning that hazardous tsunami waves from the earthquake are possible with, within 186 miles of the epicenter along the coast of Russia. Crowds of activists are expected to gather in Chicago for protests outside the Democratic National Convention this week, hoping to call attention to economic injustice, reproductive rights, and the war in Gaza. While Vice President Kamala Harris has galvanized the party as she gears up to accept the Democratic nomination, activists say their plans to demonstrate haven't changed. They're ready to amplify their progressive message before the nation's top Democratic leaders. While activists are hoping to cover a number of issues, many agree an immediate ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war is the overarching message of the demonstrations. The Chicago area has one of the largest Palestinian communities in the nation, and buses are bringing activists to Chicago from all over the country. Organizers estimate the turnout for Monday's march and rally, also the first day of the convention, to be at least 20,000 people. The World Health Organization on Wednesday declared the ongoing monkeypox outbreak in Africa a global health emergency. The organization's emergency committee convened amid concerns that a deadlier strain of the virus had reached four previously unaffected countries in Africa. This strain had previously been contained to the Democratic Republic of Congo. The independent experts met virtually Wednesday to advise WHO personnel on the severity of the outbreak. After, the, after that consultation, a public health emergency of international concern was declared. This is the highest level of alarm under international health law. Since the beginning of this year, more than 17,000 MPOX cases and more than 500 deaths have been reported in 13 countries in Africa, according to the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Motor vehicle companies Ford and Mazda are warning owners of more than 475,000 older vehicles in the U.S. not to drive them because they have dangerous Takata airbag inflators that have not been replaced. 
The warning issued Tuesday covers more than 374,000 Ford, Lincoln and Mercury vehicles from 2004 through 2014 model years and nearly 83,000 Mazdas from the 2003 through 2015 model years. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says the inflators can explode with too much force in a crash, blowing apart a metal canister and shooting fragments that can severely injure or kill people. The U.S. government says 27 people have been killed by faulty Takata inflators, which use volatile ammonium nitrate to create a small explosion which inflates the airbags in a crash. The chemical can deteriorate over time when exposed to high temperatures and humidity. More than 400 people in the U.S. have been hurt. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break. Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, a retired captain from the Quincy Fire Department and the author of the book Fighting Fire, A Proactive Approach. Home fire deaths have been cut in half since the early 70s when smoke detectors were first marketed. Having smoke detectors in your home can double your chances of survival in a fire. Sixty percent of residential fire deaths occur in homes without smoke detectors. Thus, smoke detectors must be present on each level of habitation. Photoelectric smoke detectors are required within 20 feet of a kitchen, bath, or shower. They are required on the ceiling outside bedrooms no further than 10 feet away. They are also required to be present on the ceiling at the base of stairwells. Additional placement may be required depending upon the year the home was built or when a substantial addition was added. Create a safe home environment. Maintain your smoke detectors. Thank you for doing so. Welcome back. Mall owner Simon Property Group is hoping to replicate a phenomenon that happened at one of its properties more than 1,000 miles away to reinvigorate the South Shore Plaza. The inspiration is the Southdale Center in Adena, Minnesota. Opened in 1956, it was the first enclosed shopping mall in the U.S., but it eventually faced business decline with market shifts and changing shopping attitudes. News reports dating back to 2008 show that when Simon bought Southdale Center in that year, they began to add new tenants and made physical upgrades to the mall. But the spark that Tim Fox, Simon's vice president of real estate development, said set off a chain reaction to breathe life back into the mall was the construction of a 232-unit luxury apartment complex on the property. After one Southdale place opened in 2014, the mall property later welcomed businesses like a Shake Shack, a hotel, a gym, a grocery store, and this year a Putt Shack. Simon representatives say they hope to see this type of transformation at 250 Granite Street, which first opened as an open-air plaza in 1961 and then was enclosed in 1976. Braintree's planning board met on August 13th for their monthly meeting. With a large turnout, the main topic of the night was the residences at South Shore Complex, presented by Zom Living. With this proposal being a hot topic in the town for the last year, there were a number of people in attendance to see the presentation and voice their opinions. Here's more on the proposal. There will not be any resident vehicle access to or from Laurie's Way, to or from the residences at South Shore. The Laurie's Way boundary, which has been sealed off to and from South Shore Plaza for decades, will remain sealed off, and the separation will be substantially augmented. A thick, dense, high 13-foot berm with green giant arborvitae on top will be installed. That is shown on our file plans. The Zom residences are on South Shore's Plaza's property, almost two football fields away from the closest home located east of Flaherty School. The residences are not in a neighborhood. Our town's neighborhoods are built and mature. We all know that. The residences are on South Shore Plaza's property. Last week, the state approved $5.1 billion for housing production. $5.1 billion. We need housing. Workers are leaving our state. The residences at South Shore is a $140 million investment in housing. Quality apartments are constructed nationwide at large shopping centers, and people living there support existing businesses, and they bring new ones, and they bring employment. Local examples include Hanover Crossing, Legacy Place, Dedham, University Avenue, Westwood, 
Natick Mall, Chestnut Hill Shops, Marketplace, Linfield. Building quality apartments at South Shore Plaza is imperative for Braintree to be competitive and to generate revenue to fund all of our municipal services from schools, fire, police, our library, parks, and fields. During this meeting, the board did not vote on anything regarding the complex. Make sure to tune into the planning board's monthly meetings for news and updates on this project. You can also catch full government meetings on BCAM TV's government channel, Comcast Channel 8, and Verizon Channel 26, or on youtube.com slash TV. At the town council's meeting earlier this month, members of the Braintree Fire Department, Canton Fire Department, and Brewster Ambulance Services were in attendance for a small recognition ceremony. The three departments were recognized by the Braintree Town Council for their actions on June 29th during a motor vehicle accident on Hancock Street. Here's more from Fire Chief Fred Viola. There's a motor vehicle coming down Route 37. It struck a pole and two parked vehicles. Um, at that time, the vehicle was started to get on fire, uh, started to become in flames, and um, civilian Paul Sperandia, Paul, um, I'll do that later when I can read it, but Paul, uh, Paul actually took a fire extinguisher from his house with his son and his son's son and put out the flames prior to our arrival. Um, at first, they didn't think anybody was in the car, but as they were going to do this, they heard some groaning and they saw some people, uh, saw a person in the vehicle. So their actions right there controlled the fire that would have got out of control and probably burned that person alive in the vehicle. So they, they deserve recognition for that. When the officer left Engine Two's quarters, he had the wherewithal to take the rescue truck that's parked there from the MBTA. Uh, it's a heavy duty rescue, it has extra tools on it. So just that decision alone shows the leadership and the, the forward thinking of, you know what, we could leave the tower, let's take this, because this is, sounds pretty significant. Um, when they got there, they were, the, um, the pole was split in half and it was actually dangling from the high voltage wires. So it, it, ironically, there was no power lost because the, the, uh, the pole balanced up, up on the wires but pulling that in. So that's obviously a hazard for our, for our folks underneath that. But still, without any regard for their own safety, they started the process of cutting the, the vehicle away from the occupant who was trapped inside. Um, he was trapped up under the dashboard, so it took some time. They had to cut around that, the person, and they cut the roof off and the doors off and things like that that we practice a lot. Um, and we uh, were able, after some time, to remove the, the victim. The key here is that in a traumatic situation like that, there was a lot of blood loss. Um, the paramedics are there, they can start IV fluids, and they also summoned the C6, or CAR6, from Canton Fire Department, which is a mobile blood transfusion truck. So in a case of trauma, when people meet that certain criteria, uh, this truck can come and deliver whole blood and, and actually save lives. If the fluid does, does its job, but the blood is really the key here. And uh, it's pretty amazing. So Dr. Volcanus, who's here, um, he is uh, pretty much the director of this whole program. Leo Reardon is the, my counterpart, the EMS coordinator for Canton Fire. And they've done an unbelievable job with this. It started in March, and they got a lot of uh, bridesmaids and never brides. Uh, but on this particular call, in this particular uh, facet, everything added up. And in, they were able to do the first blood transfusion in the state of Massachusetts from Braintree to the Boston Hospital and the patient survived. So I felt that that is something that is, yeah, might seem every day to some, but the, the cooperation and uh, you can see the amount of people behind me, uh, what it actually takes to do something like this. It's so important when you have the right resources and the right people and the right training. In honor of International Overdose Awareness Day, the annual Butterfly Release Ceremony will be held on Friday, August 30th. During the ceremony, each attendee will either receive a live butterfly to set free or a wildflower seed paper.
If any Braintree residents hope to attend the event at French's Common, please RSVP to the Facebook event or email marcy at thesunwillrise.org so event organizers know how many butterflies are needed. International Overdose Awareness Day is a global event held each year and aims to raise awareness in the community of overdose and reduce the stigma of a drug-related death. It also acknowledges the grief felt by families and friends remembering those who have died or had a, per a permanent injury as a result of drug overdose. Braintree's Department of Elder Affairs has a number of updates and activities for seniors this summer. As a reminder, the center's summer hours were altered, with the senior centers now staying open until 7 p.m. on Tuesdays to offer a light dinner, and closes early on Fridays at 1 p.m. Some activities that are offered throughout the summer include daily exercise classes, regulation bocce every Monday at 2 p.m., varied card and game days on Tuesdays, and the Asian Outreach Group, which meets on Wednesdays. Then, every Monday at 11.30 a.m., the Norfolk County Sheriff's Office is offering safety programs for seniors. Some one-time events that are coming up this month include the Norfolk County Entomologist Visit on August 26th at 1 p.m. Also on August 26th at 1 p.m. is Crafting with Nancy and Ginny. And finally, on August 27th, a special dinner and interactive conversation led by Cheryl Bottieri, MS on Heb's book will take place from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Suggested donation is $10 and participation is limited. For more information, contact the department at 781-848-1963 or stop by at 71 Cleveland Avenue. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Thayer Public Library has been having a busy summer. You may have seen us around town at the Farmer's Market or at French's Common for our big bubble party. We have also been preparing to celebrate a big anniversary next month, 150 years serving, educating, and connecting Braintree. A month-long celebration with activities and events for all ages is ready to roll out. But for now, let me tell you what's up at the library for the rest of August. Tuesday, August 27th at 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., we have Silent Book Club. Do you miss silent reading time like when we were kids? Silent Book Club on Tuesday, August 27th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. is exactly that. A book club that's low pressure, social, optional, and no homework. You read what you want, and it's a book club for adults with an already busy calendar or already full to-be-read pile that just need time to set aside to sit and read. Find out about all six of our book clubs the library offers on our website at therapubliclibrary.org forward slash book dash club or on our event calendar. Summer hours continue through Labor Day. Fall library hours starting Tuesday, September 3rd will be 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. But if you're already in back to school mode and looking forward to fall, check out the library's online learning platforms. For example, Gale Courses, which offers six-week classes with actual instructors and assignments for education and enrichment. Popular classes range from Accounting Fundamentals and A to Z Grant Writing to Drawing for Absolute Beginners and Stocks, Bonds, and Investing. Oh my! Our newest online learning platform, Gale Presents Udemy, offers close 20,000 self-directed video-based educational courses from actual college and university professors. Increase your learning skills in the areas of business, tech, and personal development across 75 plus different categories from the comfort of your own home on a computer or mobile device. If you just Google them, you'll find out that these learning platforms aren't free. They're only free through the library website. Find Udemy, Gale Courses, and more online learning resources at our website, which you can see on the bottom of the screen. All you need to get started is your Thera Public Library card. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. On Thursday last week, Governor Maura Healey signed a bill to phase out the use of toxic forever chemicals in firefighters' protective gear. Healy's administration said the law deals with PFAS chemicals, which have long been used in firefighters' protective equipment due to their ability to withstand high heat and block water and oil penetration.
Much of recent research has shown that PFAS chemicals can be extremely toxic even at low levels, and firefighters and their families have cited high rates of cancer in the profession. In a statement from the governor's office, starting in January, all manufacturers and sellers of gear that contain the chemicals will have to provide written notice to the buyer that the equipment has such chemicals, the reason why, and the specific PFAS chemicals in question. 44-year-old Kelly Shaw pleaded not guilty to the first-degree murder of Weymouth Christine Mello. Shaw, saw, Shaw was then indicted on the murder charge Monday. Shaw and a co-defendant, John Harper, were previously indicted on larceny charges related to alleged theft of Mello's car and unauthorized use of her financial accounts. The court clerk told Shaw she has been charged with assaulting and killing Mello between February 21st and 29th of this year. In a court filing, prosecutors cite a witness who said Shaw confessed to killing Mello with a teapot during a fight. Shaw told JK, the witness listed in the court documents, that during a fight Mello approached her with a knife in the kitchen. Shaw said she hit Mello in the head with a teapot and that she immediately died and fell to the ground. The statement says, Shaw told JK she left the body on the floor for days until she grew worried that Mello's dog would eat her remains and so wrapped the body and moved it to the basement, according to the statement. She then showed JK the body in the basement, according to prosecutors. On Friday afternoon, two boats collided in the water in Hingham Bay. The incident happened in the vicinity of Grape Island, which is approximately one mile north of Hingham Harbor in Weymouth. The U.S. Coast Guard said they responded to a collision between a 21-foot sailboat and a 38-foot powerboat along the Quincy and Weymouth Harbor Masters. According to authorities, the crash submerged the sailboat, leaving only the top of its mast and the tip of the bow visible above the waterline. A source told WCVB a motorboat struck the sailboat and a man and woman on board the sailboat both suffered serious injuries. Apparently hit by the other boat's propeller, the two on the motorboat appeared unhurt and were brought to the shore and questioned by state environmental police. The investigation into the collision continues as authorities work to determine if someone is at fault. The town of Weymouth received a $200,000 grant from the state to help with its ongoing effort to rehabilitate the Emory family estate. The town received the grant from the State Office of Travel and Tourism through the Destination Development Capital Grant Program. Weymouth Mayor Robert Headland said in a statement, quote, For years, the elements have taken its toll on the over 100-year-old building, and we have been working to first remediate hazardous materials and stabilize the structure as we implement a long-term reuse plan." End quote. The town bought the home and 24 acres of land that surrounds it on top of King Oak Hill from the Emory family in 2011 for $1.9 million using Community Preservation Act money. The Emory family, prominent Boston area wool merchants, owned the property for nearly a century. Over the weekend, Quincy celebrated its 37th annual August Moon Festival. The day was a spectacular presentation of Asian cultures, including food, dance, music, martial arts, and more. The event, which began in Quincy in 1987, drew a large crowd to Quincy on Sunday to celebrate the autumn harvest. Emceed by Miss Massachusetts 2023 Chelsea Vong, there was a lot to look forward to at the event as a number of performances were lined up, several types of Asian cuisine were available, and attractions filled Quincy Center. You can see Quincy's August Moon Festival on BCAM TV's public channel, Comcast Channel 9, and Verizon Channel 28, or on youtube.com slash BCAM TV. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Take steps to keep yourself and your family safe from ticks and the illnesses they can cause. Use EPA-approved tick repellents on your skin and clothes. Read and follow the directions. Wear light-colored clothing to make it easier to spot a crawling tick. Check for ticks on yourself, your kids, and your pets anytime you've been outdoors. Some tick bites can make you sick, but finding and removing a tick properly makes it less likely. Call your doctor if you start to feel ill or notice a rash near the bite. Play it safe when you're outdoors. Welcome back to Braintree Today. This week in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations for you to watch. First up, 
Jackpot takes place in the near future and follows a grand lottery that has been newly established in California. The only catch? Kill the winner before sundown to legally claim their multi-billion dollar jackpot. The film stars John Cena and Aquafina. You can watch Jackpot now on Amazon Prime Video. Next up, The Union follows Mike a down-to-earth construction worker who is thrust into the world of super spies and secret agents when his high school sweetheart, Roxanne, recruits him on a high-stakes U.S. intelligence mis mission. The film stars Mark Wahlberg and Halle Berry. You can watch The Union now on Netflix. And finally, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga follows young Furiosa, who falls into the hands of a great biker horde led by the warlord Dementis. Sweeping through the wasteland, they come across the Citadel, presided over by Immortan Joe. As the two tyrants fight for dominance, Furiosa soon finds herself in a non-stop battle to make her way home. The film stars Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth. You can watch Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, now on Max. That'll do it for news today. Remember, if you're a customer of Verizon, you can watch Bcam TV in high definition on channel 2128. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Brainchew Today on Bcam TV. We'll see you next time.